All right, week 10, problem 10. An experimenter wishes to generate in air a sound wave that has displacement amplitude of five times 10 to negative six meters. The pressure amplitude is to be limited to 0.8 pascals. What is the minimum wavelength the sound wave can have? Take the equilibrium density of air to be uh, 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter and assume the speed of sound in air is 343 meters per second. Okay, um, <clears throat> this guy is a little rough. So my conceptual understanding of this guy is pretty much minimal. So what I'm gonna do, there's a, um, I know there's an equation and it's particle displacement. So we take our particle displacement equation and progressive sine waves, nope. there we go, right here. So particle displacement, let's see. Particle displacement is denoted as, I think that's a delta. Maybe I can click it. Delta. Bam, it is delta. So delta change is pressure, P. Let's see, pressure is actually P. Uh, yep, P is pressure. And omega is angular frequency, and Z is the acoustic impedance. So I'm going to write this guy down real quick so I don't lose him. So displacement, which I think is, no, we're looking for the wavelength. But they give us a um, uh, displacement that we know we're looking for. So we have the pressure over omega z, where omega is the angular um, velocity and z is the acoustic impedance. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look up what acoustic impedance is. Uh, there we go. Acoustic impedance. Impedance uh, measures the opposition a system represents to the acoustic flow resulting in an acoustic pressure applied to the system. Blah blah blah. Uh, this guy's yeah, quite the. Hmm. Hmm. It's not what I want. I want something much simpler. Uh, let's see. Related to the density, maybe. Aha! Here we go. Absolute value of this specific. Acoustic impedance is often called the characteristic specific acoustic impedance and is denoted Z naught. So we're just going to use rho times C. Bam. So we're going to have pressure over omega times rho, which is the density, times C, which is speed of propagation. I'm just going to call that V for velocity. All right. Now they don't give us omega. They give us... Yep, they don't give us omega at all. So we know that omega equals 2 pi f, which is a frequency, which doesn't do us a whole lot of good. Um, but we also know that velocity equals distance divided by time, which equals lambda times frequency. Bam. So frequency equals v over lambda. So 2 pi v over lambda. Therefore, 1 over omega equals lambda over 2 pi v. So we have pressure over rho times velocity times lambda over 2 pi v. Okay, that seems reasonable. So what we're looking for is lambda, this guy right there. So I'm going to combine these two Vs. That's terrible boardsmanship, but it just happened. I th think I'll just throw all this together and see if something magically happens the way I want. So on the other side, we had displacement. Check. We have multiply by density times 2 pi um, times a V squared. Rho 2 pi V squared and divided by the pressure. Let's make sure we got all these guys. So we got the displacement, check. We have the density, check. 2 pi, yep. Always have pi. Hmm, that's probably a good policy to live by. We have the velocity, speed of propagation, 343. Three, and we have the pressure, 0.8 pascals. And these are all so far in um, the units that we need. 
So this is going to be 5 times 10 to the negative 6 times rho, which is 1.2 times 2 pi times velocity, which is 343. Hmm, this is going to be a long wavelength. Squared. Oh no, because we've got negative 6 over pressure, which is 0 0.8. Okay, and I'm just going to straight Wolfram this. Wolfram, 5 times 10 to the negative 6 times 1.2 times 2 times pi. 1.2, 2 pi, and 3, 4, 3. 3, 4, 3, we'll square that, and we'll divide by the pressure, which is 0 0.8. 0 0.8, okay. We'll say equals, ah, oh, I just said it right there. I didn't even have to, didn't have to do the whole computing thing. 5.54. 5 5.54. 5 meters. And there's the answer. Um, yeah. So for this one, I just work it out once, realize the formulas exist. Um, if you have them on your formula sheet before the test, then that's great. If not, then for the 10 seconds you may already spend memorizing, add on another 10 to quickly memorize um, acoustic impedance and this displacement formula. Um, I don't see much value in having a long-term understanding of this uh, of this equation. And if you want to, you know, if you're going to go deeper in life with this uh, with um, these concepts, you'll learn more about it later. So for this class, this is all I would do. All right, on to problem 11.